nine bit. Out there early, not waiting till we have what is the Oculus Rift? Well, for those wondering, it's an advanced virtual reality headset that's set to come out sometime soon. Take a look at this. My name is Paul Merlucky, and I'm a virtual reality enthusiast and the designer of the Rift. Games are something I'm really passionate about, and even more than playing games, I'm passionate about bringing games to the next level. What we're doing at Oculus is trying to create the world's best virtual reality headset designed very specifically for gaming. Where this all started was in my parents' garage in Long Beach, California, and I was interested in stereoscopic displays, I was interested in head mounts, and the problem was there was nothing that gave me the experience that I wanted, the matrix, where I can plug in and actually be in the game. And I was sure that somewhere out there there was something that I could buy, and the reality is there's nothing. I set out to change that with the Oculus Rift. The magic that sets the Rift apart is immersive stereoscopic 3D rendering, a massive field of view, and ultra low latency head tracking. What all this means is that the Oculus is going to track your head movements with great precision. It'll also wind up taking up your entire field of vision, so it won't be like sitting in a theater when you're using the Rift. It'll be a lot more like waking up in a dream. The Oculus Rift Kickstarter had a modest goal of $250,000. It wound up making $2.4 million. Once the Oculus launches to the public, there is going to be a ton of stuff to play on it. Here are 10 games worth playing once you get yours. Ether One is an upcoming indie puzzler that looks like an unusual but beautiful mix of the story of To The Moon with the graphics of Bioshock Infinite and the strange, otherworldly feeling of Mist. According to the game's official site, you are a restorer, an individual with a lost identity who is sent into the minds of mentally ill humans to restructure the broken memories. Tasked with restoring the mind of a client named Jean, you must explore the depths of her memories in order to rebuild the fragile structures within. So, if you restore her memories, you'll wind up restoring yours somehow. Look at it. A shadow of a place. Nothing left but fragments, and even those are slipping away. They broke its heart, and I don't know how to put it back together. Too many pieces. Although there's no official release date at the moment, the game is set to come out sometime this year, and it's something I'm really looking forward to for the rest. Edge is a personal favorite of mine. The original came out a while back, and there are currently plans to reboot the series. While we're waiting, the original can work on the Oculus thanks to Vireo, a 3D driver that makes more things work with the Oculus. In case you're not familiar with the story of Mirror's Edge, it's a first-person parkour adventure set in a massive dystopian city in which your sister has been falsely accused of killing a politician running for office. You play as Faith, a runner. In the game, runners deliver information, much to the chagrin of the oppressive authorities that dominate everybody's lives. Mirror's Edge, when it first came out, sold relatively poorly. Plenty of people loved it, but none of people actually bought it. It was sorely underrated, and it's kind of funny that now it's one of the most hotly anticipated games for the Rift, in spite of its being created before the Rift was but a twinkle in the eye of Palmer Luckett. <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps the creators of the reboot have plans to make the new game Oculus compatible right out of the box? Time shall tell. Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Oculus Rift. We received our development kit a few weeks ago and what you see now is God Factory running on it. Like God Factory Wingman looks to be like quite the interesting game. It's a MOBA in space. Now for those of you who don't know, a multiplayer online battle arena is a game in which there are two teams and each team has the goal of getting to the other team's goal, as it were, and eliminating it. If you're familiar with Defense of the Ancients, Dota, or League of Legends, it's a lot like that. In this game, your goal is to protect a very large cargo ship. 
And this game is going to shine with Oculus support. I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. At the time of this video being created, the God Factory Wingman Kickstarter had very little time to go. So, if you're watching this video around the time of its creation, please do yourself a favor and look for God Factory Wingman on Kickstarter. If you're into dogfighting, in space, if you enjoy team-based games, then you're definitely going to want to take a look at God Factory Wingman. It really looks very unique. It's hard to not feel like you could be better when you feel like you're actually there, so I can actually live with that. And I hope that many of you uh, who are already excited with the Oculus Rift will be um, as uh, impatient as us to actually try it, like have a real competitive game with all people connected on the Oculus Rift and knowing that everyone actually lives the experience in the most immersive way. So that's it for today, thanks for listening and uh, please share uh, this video, we need all the views we can get, thank you. should have acted. They're already here. The Elder Scrolls told of their return. Their defeat was merely a delay. To the time after Oblivion opened. When the sons of Skyrim would spill their own blood. Here's a game that practically needs no introduction. The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, is going to be playable on the Rift. Bethesda's super popular fantasy epic is going to be mind-blowing on the Oculus. Chances are, you'll spend the first few hours walking around in shock. You'll feel transported to Whiterun, and you'll casually stroll up to the guards and attempt to pop arrow and the knee jokes to them. But getting back to business, there's plenty of work that's being done to make Skyrim run beautifully on the Rift. This includes a number of mods, so please, be sure to check them out if you plan on playing with an Oculus. If you own a copy of this game, you would be doing yourself a disservice not to play it on the Oculus Rift. I've begun my voyage in a paper boat without a bottom. I will fly to the moon in it. I've been folded along a crease in time, a weakness in the sheet of life. Now you've settled on the opposite side of the paper to me. I can see your traces in the ink that soaks through the fiber, the pulped vegetation. When we become waterlogged and the cage disintegrates, we will intermingle. When this paper aeroplane leaves the cliff edge and carves parallel vapor trails in the dark, we will come together. Dear Esther isn't your ordinary game. In all honesty, there isn't too much gameplay in it to begin with. It's more like a Keats poem that you can walk around in, and that's not at all a bad thing. I've played through the first chapter and absolutely loved it. I'm going to wait until I have my hands on an Oculus Rift to experience the whole thing. The bleak, rugged landscape is beautiful. Perhaps it's a part of a new genre of interactive poetry? Whatever the case, this is yet another title worth playing on the Rift. These next tests require cooperation. Consequently, they have never been solved by a human. That's where you come in. You don't know pride. You don't know fear. You don't know anything. You'll be perfect.
is a great guilt that sits on my chest every morning. That guilt is owning Portal 2 and having not yet beaten it, in spite of my love for the original game. In case you don't know what it is, Portal 2 is a brilliant first-person puzzler in which you create portals to solve physics-oriented puzzles. Besides having great gameplay, Portal 2 is chock full of personality, and though you play as a woman named Chell, the real star of Portal is GLaDOS, a matriarchal, homicidal, and bitterly sarcastic computer that may or may not be trying to kill you. Continue testing. Portal 2 is a great game on its own. I might not wait for my rift in order to get around to actually playing it. That being said, I really want to know what it's like to play Portal. To really be in the game, you know? I mean, Portal 2, whether or not I wait for the rift to show up, I'm definitely going to wind up playing it with a rift once I have one. I mean, a game like that is very atmospheric, you know? It has so much personality. That's something I cannot wait to experience on a rift. Don't disappoint me. Or I'll make you wish you could die. Star Citizen was a Kickstarter smash hit. It's a space sim that looks very deep. Take a look at the following video for a great explanation of what it is. Hi, I'm Chris Roberts. Ever since I saw Star Wars as a wide-eyed eight-year-old, I dreamt of being a hotshot pilot saving the galaxy or a lovable rogue making my way across the cosmos. It inspired me to make Wing Commander and has influenced everything I've done since then. Ten years ago, after 20 years of making games, I was burned out so I took a break, but I never stopped playing games nor loving them. And now, I'm ready to come back, and I'd like to show you something I've been working on. But I don't want to build any old game. I want to build a universe. I want to build a game I always wanted to build, but I didn't have the tools to do until now. One that you can fly off a carrier fighting a heroic war on the front lines, but also one that you can muster out and find your own fortune in the stars wherever your spaceship takes you. I want to be able to share this experience with my friends and fight against real opponents in space, not just AI. And I want this to be as good or better than any other game out there. And I want to actively push the boundaries of what you can do in a game. None of this would have been even possible two years ago. But with Moore's Law driving PC performance and costs and the gaming community embracing talented developers via crowdfunding, I believe it is possible today. I've never been accused of having a small vision. And so I thought it was best if I share my ambition with you visually. I'm pretty excited by how it's joined out. So why don't you come join me for a sneak peek? I have to say that it reminds me, in part, of FTL, Faster Than Light, but in 3D, and with a bit more of an open approach. Frankly, I'm almost scared of what this game will be like with the Oculus. The developers are working hard on making it compatible for it. <laughs> something that has the fidelity of a film but real time and I'm in it and that is my dream. My name is Chris Roberts and I would like to build a universe with you. is the sci-fi masterpiece that put Valve on the map as a developer. It came out many years ago, but it's still loved today, 
And quite recently, fans of the series have created a remake of the game called Black Mesa. As you may have guessed, it will be playable on the Oculus Rift. Now, the original Half-Life was very well received for its storytelling, um, gameplay, obviously, and how it managed to combine the two so masterfully. The remake is going to be incredible on the Rift. Even though I've only played a few minutes of the original Half-Life, there was something about its atmosphere that really sunk down deep into me, you know? I mean, I don't think I've really experienced anything quite like that before, so I'm definitely going to be holding out for Black Mesa on the Oculus. Oh, and did I forget to mention? It's completely and utterly free to download. While you're watching, I may as well mention that Valve has officially announced support for the Oculus Rift for Half-Life 2. Our next game is one that has been built from the ground up with the Oculus Rift in mind. Mark Long, CEO of Meteor Entertainment, the publisher of Hawken. Hawken is this amazing mech first-person shooter created by Kang Lee and the visionaries at Adhesive Studios. So Hawken has basically been our passion project for this indie team, and we really want to capture the sense of driving a heavy machine in this sort of post-apocalyptic world. So after my first experience with the Rift, I knew right away it's gonna be a perfect match for Hawking. I was just thrilled when I tried on the Oculus Rift and it was everything I ever dreamed of. I'm psyched to announce that Hawking's gonna be Oculus ready when we launch on 12-12-12. So what you're going for in virtual reality is a sense of presence. You're gonna really have that with Hawking and the Rift. You're gonna feel like you're in a giant mech flying around inside a massive battle on this crazy planet. King's environments are exactly the kind of thing that I can't wait to explore in VR. They're varied, they're complex, and they're really beautiful to look at. As a concept artist, uh, my passion is world building, and game developers always want the players to be as immersed as possible in their world, and I think the Oculus allow that fantasy to become a reality. Environments are richly detailed, but they're also deep and on a grand scale. The sterile 3D really brings a sense of depth not possible playing on a flat screen. You really do want to look around to be a, a better player, and Oculus gives you that opportunity. We're going to make an exclusive Hawken cockpit interior so that when you play the game, you'll be able to look around and see the inside of your mech. Hawken is going to be a great showcase for what developers can do using our SDK and Unreal. I think it's really cool that our backers are going to be among the first to play Hawken in virtual reality. We're excited to be part of this. We're excited to be part of the dev community that's really going to do virtual reality right for the first time. When people try Hawken in a Rift, I think they're going to understand all of this hype, all the potential, what it means for the future of virtual reality. And it's definitely going to enhance the visceral experience of piloting a man. I just can't think of a better fit. It's going to be a great opportunity for the player to experience the hockey in the best possible way. Frankly, I think we're just one step closer to the Matrix with Hawken. We have arrived at our tenth and final game. It's an indie blockbuster that everybody loves and has played, is playing, or will play at some point in time. That game is Minecraft. Personally, I'm just looking forward to the insane things that can be done with textures and shader packs. The adventures I'll wind up having with Minecraft and an Oculus are almost too good to try to imagine. Although it was officially completed some while back, Minecraft is still receiving plenty of updates. The latest update adds horses, of all things, along with horse armor. Now, I'm pretty sure the horse armor is some sort of inside joke, but the horses are going to be amazing to ride on with a rift. If there's one thing I've always loved about Minecraft, it's that it leaves you so much freedom. Freedom to explore, or to build, freedom to just mess around with the scenery, you know? That's something that I think is perfect for Rift. Well, that's all for now, folks. If you're interested in the Rift, please be sure to check out the official site, oculusvr.com, 
and stick with us for further coverage. For a certain segment of the population, the hacker maker crowd, this is going to be awesomely cool to work with. What I've got now is, I honestly think the best VR demo probably the world's ever seen. We're certainly going to take this into our future projects. So. We're getting involved in Oculus now because we see an incredible opportunity here for game developers to experience something new. The Rift is taking years of virtual reality research and putting it into a package that everyone can use. So I recently had a chance in person to check out the Oculus headset and needless to say, I'm a believer. Uh, even as a prototype, what I saw was extremely promising. We're extremely excited here at Epic Games to get the Unreal Engine integrated with Oculus. And I think the possibilities for the games are extremely exciting and I'm thrilled for the whole project. Well, I gotta say, I, I just tried the Oculus prototype and it was such an immersive, amazing experience that we pretty quickly, like within an hour, decided to get behind this project. I got to meet Palmer Lucky and try out the Oculus Rift. And I have to say it was a very exciting moment. Could be the beginning of a whole new industry that leads us eventually to having true augmentation all the time, every place. And I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to program with it and to see what we can do. It looks incredibly exciting. If anybody's going to tackle these set of hard problems, we think that Palmer's going to do it. So we'd strongly encourage you to support this Kickstarter. In the past, I've looked through these VR headsets and head-mounted displays, and this is the first one that I've seen that I was truly impressed with. There's a lot of great head-mounted displays out there, but they're all really, really expensive, up to over $100,000. What the Rift does is it makes a high-end virtual reality experience available to the average gamer. So most consumer head-mounted displays have a diagonal field of view of about 30 or 40 degrees. You see a really small image way off in the distance and it doesn't make you feel like you're there. With the Oculus Rift, you get a diagonal field of view of 110 degrees. That means you're not looking at a screen anymore. You actually feel like you're inside of the world. Nine bit.